What you see happening and going on, you have every right to proactively come and speak and use your voice. And we're finding that it's very effective website pages you hold those city council members to the fire in our in our municipality though with it being so big is, will we go to the state because of how big this is yeah, well that's right but the county is still overseen but there are county seats that have meetings there are legislative bodies that sit above them that you can go to and Bob and I have found through Facebook that these communities are very helpful when there is an elective <coughs> representative that they name and they put them on that hot seat and say this is a problem and you are not responding and you get response. Don't think you can't do it because you can and that's where a huge difference can be made to start taking steps for changes. Go to make it your business to get involved and be heard and use your voice and be proactive. It is a game changer, it's a huge game changer in all of this social media that has now taken over our lives because we are finding things out. We are using our voice. We are getting sick and tired of it. It's your water, it's your family, it's your health, it's your right. You speak up and you hold those who are in position accountable. Just like I think we should hold companies accountable. I, you know what, listen, lawsuits are gonna abound. I'm not gonna tell you they're not. I think the game changer is when that person wants to shut their mouth about a leak at a water intake that's gonna poison 330,000 people, it better be the same thing as when you assault somebody in a bar. Your ass is going to jail. Yeah, thanks. So you can make that difference, and that is one of the first steps that you can take. You, and, and you can do that, and let your representatives know. And we see this happening right now in Utah, where there's a big medical incinerator, and they've had this bypass, and they've dumped all of this stuff on this community, and children have been affected. This is a group of Mormon mothers that have gotten together, are using their voices, and they're actually marching on the hill and they are making a difference. They are being heard. So I think that we are here now and in that era, and it will be your voice commanding and holding those that you see as accountable for making changes that protect you to the fire, and they're responding. So I think that you, that you can do that. That's what I would recommend you do. We'll certainly be here to guide you and cheer you on all the way. I mean, we did it in Carson, and it was unbelievable, the change it made. But how do we get that core group of people who can get this information out on Facebook? Who can? You can start a page. Who can? You can start a community page, and every community we're involved with does that. I've been doing it already. Mm -hmm. And there you go, and so here you have one tonight that you can join. Um, by way of example, and this isn't off topic because it's just to help you how this happens, I'm involved with a group of women who've been affected by a um, birth control device called Assure. They created a Facebook page and suddenly it went from 10 to 1,000 to 10,000 to national attention to now actually looking at laws being changed. And just because they got together on Facebook, they began to share stories with each other that they made this change. You can come to my website, and all of you, if you do this, we have now a health book that, of people like this community reporting problems in their state. We've given you a platform where you can connect with each other. And when you start seeing the stories that it's not just your story, and it's not just you, and it's not just you, and it's not just you, or you, or you, or you, it's all of you, it becomes horribly powerful. You can create your own Facebook page. She can have a Facebook page. We can get both of you to come to myhealthbook.net and we can put you all out there and you will find each other. That's when it becomes very, very powerful. You know, I think that oftentimes, and I'm not giving anybody a pass here, legislators and our officials don't know what's going on here with you. I mean, I know people try often to report it, but they don't see the bigger picture. Once you start sharing your stories, once you start voicing your stories and being proactive and they see the bigger picture, then they're forced at hand to do something. 
They don't tend to get too worried if it's one or ten. But when it becomes thousands, they get to be very concerned. And, and they become responsive. Have we got an accurate account of people who'd actually been admitted to the hospital? As of this morning, I heard only ten people were it's in the 12. hospital. So there's twelve. I've heard fourteen. Okay. I've heard 14, and we have had people reporting to me that they have um, sores in their throat or sores in their head because a lot of people did shower or were in the bath. So there are reports out there. The actual number, no, but as people report it to me, we can get it up on that health book so people can now go, wow, I'm not the only one. Over 800 calls of poison control. That's true, and people have been poisoned, and we need to have a central reporting location for that. Again, that's what my health book is designed to do. So we can open it up and go, and you know what, for you, for the person who walks around, and I dealt with this in Hinkley, that thinks, everyone thinks I'm crazy. Everyone's telling me I'm crazy. Oh, I haven't been poisoned. Oh, that level can't hurt you. We begin to shut up. It is very empowering to you when you find out you and you and you and you and you and you and you all suffered the same thing. Thank God, I'm not crazy. Don't let somebody tell you you're crazy. You're not crazy. And find a place where you can collectively get this data, whether you use my health book, whether you begin to create one on your own Facebook, or you join with her or everyone joins on her Facebook. A place where you can centrally download and communicate with each other about what's happening to you. Then we can actually start getting numbers, not from some random statistic, or it's 14 or 12 or somebody reporting, you report it. Every one of you get to that central location, and if it happens to be on my healthbook.net, or just email me, report it and we will post it. So we have a central location where we can see you and see what's happening to you. I live within, I'll, excuse me, I I'll, I'll live within a half mile of the place, and I, when I go to the restroom, to the bathroom, it's overwhelming. It just same here. It knocks you down same almost, here. and I, it, I, immediately I begin to have the symptoms of a slight headache. So how do you know when to go to get this documented to the doctor, to the hospital, without boggling them down when they have more major emergencies? And that might just be a minor little thing, you have a little minor little slight headache, but it's due to the odor. How do you know when to Well, that's an excellent go? question, and I think How a lot of people feel that. The next few days? Because I personally have just not felt the same, but I'm not mm -hmm. sick, sick, but yet, mm -hmm. but not, you know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, say that it's safe. We've seen this in every case. We've seen this in Hinkley, California. Inhalation can be one of the worst forms. As we get involved with you and you start telling us this and we can start reporting that it is happening, uh, doctors don't know. You know, when all the people from Hinkley, California who had been poisoned by hexavalent chromium presented to their doctors, their doctors didn't know. They didn't know what somebody poisoned by hexavalent chromium would be like because we just don't see it in the environment. We've become a group of big guinea pigs. No doctor's gonna know what methylcyclohexane can or can't do to you. But as you report it, don't let that go. This is something that I have said. I anticipate it could get worse before it gets better once the water's turned on. Because people will now, if it's in the system and they are using it, they're going to begin to report headaches. They're gonna to begin to report sore throats, difficulty breathing, skin rashes, sores on their heads. It, and until we have that information, they're not gonna know. And we don't know a lot about this chemical. And, and we've had this argument in, for 20 some years regarding <coughs> hexavalent chromium. Oh, now let me mind you, it's a known toxic mutagenic chemical for over a hundred years. But when you drink it, it can't hurt you. Bullshit. And we have to start 
getting this information together and presenting it and letting your doctor know. And what is the exact effect? Is it something neurological? I'm not sure. Is it a short-term effect? Possibly. Toxicologists get involved, and it depends on a dose-response ratio. But here is what troubles us about setting maximum contaminant levels. One ppm may not bother him, but one ppm is going to really bother that little baby. And so this is what we have to start looking at. And you hope that you have a doctor that will listen. Look, there was a ground, there was a, a contamination. I'm sure you've read it. I'm sure your office was probably closed down. But I'm experiencing headaches or respiratory problems. There might be something that he can give you to relieve that short term. But long term, if there's a neurological problem, for all of you, we're not going to know for at least five or seven years. Well, the, they're not gonna be responsible for that. What I tell you is gonna happen is as the water's on or people start getting sick, there's going to be lawsuits and those lawsuits will file and demand medical monitoring. But your agencies aren't gonna volunteer to do that. Pardon? And then you're going to be talked about like a dog. Your friends will turn on you. Your community will turn on you. I began asking questions when I was about seven or eight years of age when I had a bad explosion in my neck. And didn't even know that, the, the, in fact, the community didn't even realize that there was something in the neighborhood that could explode. It exploded one night. We thought the end of the world had come. Didn't have much transportation. People just started leaving the community in the streets. 